Hi everyone, and welcome back to the channel. My name is Wade Thomas here with Black Tie Barn, and today we're gonna to be reviewing some candles sent in by Chris Torres, a subscriber here on the channel. If this is your first time watching one of these review videos, let me tell you a little bit how this works. These candles are sent in voluntarily, and the purpose of these videos is to not talk about what is like right or wrong or which materials to use or not use. We all use different products. We all make different types of candles for different purposes, different markets, different branding, all of that. So this is really about constructive feedback from someone that's been in the industry for a while. And just to let you know the things I really like about the candles and if they were my products, things that I would be thinking about or considering, uh, maybe changing or improving as I go. And so we're gonna look at the candles, talk a little bit about them visually. And then of course, I'm gonna test these candles as well. Let you know what I'm thinking while I'm testing these candles. Talk about the wicking, the performance, uh, we're going to talk about the hot throw and the fragrances, of course. I'm going to try to make some guesses on some of the materials that we're using. And then we'll wrap this video up with a summary. And again, as a reminder, I'm not an expert on everything when it comes to candle making. I'm just going to tell you my perspective, things that I'm thinking about. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoy it. And hopefully I can offer some constructive feedback to Chris and his products. I'm really excited to get going and get started here. So I've already got the box open here. We're going to dig right in and just go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna go ahead and get everything out of the box first, but I'd like to show you this part just to take a look at the packaging a little bit, um, just in case there's anything worth talking about at this stage. All right, so it looks like we've got two products here and a letter. Uh, let me go ahead and take a quick look at this first. Sometimes in these videos, the person sitting in the candles will give me two letters. One is telling me things that they want me to know up front, and then the second part of the video is, uh, there'll be another envelope, which is more of the specific materials they might be using and the purpose is to for me to try to kind of guess along the way and then see how close I was either right or wrong at the very end. But in this case we've got one letter and Chris is wanting to share the materials he is using. Looks like we're going to be reviewing this candle with an all-natural soy wax candle using candle science fragrance oils and eco 16 wicks. So I'm going to set that aside and let's go ahead and dig in here and see what we're working with. Now while I'm showing these, I do want to remind everyone that everyone is a different stage of their candle making. Some have been doing it for a while and they just want feedback on maybe a new collection or a new line. Others are just starting and they're just experimenting and learning as they go. Maybe they're tweaking labels or maybe they are just experimenting with new waxes. So there's everyone's at a different point of their candle making. So my goal here is to tell everyone like what to do or anything like that. And again, I'm not gonna harp on things that I know are under development. For example, I know Chris is really hasn't been making candles that long and he is just uh, kind of wanting some feedback on where he's at at this stage. He also sent me these a while back, so he's probably already changed a lot since then. Uh, but I just want to make sure everyone is clear with that, that not everyone here is running a business and we're all at different levels and stages of candle making. So with that being said, again, we've got two candles here. One is called Red Cinnamon Stick and the other is called Orange Pumpkin Spice. So let's take this one out of the box. Now, real quick, what I would mention to Chris here is uh, these were packaged in a box full of packing peanuts and they were packaged well enough that they were not going to break. So they were definitely in good shape. I would probably recommend uh, taping this box closed or doing something just because the lid was wanting to kind of pop open before I even got it out. So that would be my only suggestion on the packaging. Now let's talk about the candles. Let's start with this one here. So this is red cinnamon sticks. And what I really like here is that Chris multicolored this. So he's got two different shades, a green and a red. And you can tell by the way that this wax is blended that the bottom layer wasn't completely solidified when he poured his second. And if you want a hard line, if you're using two different colors, then you want the bottom layer to really firm up before you pour in your second color. That way you get more of a, a sharp line between the two colors. This, in this case, he went with more of kind of a faded blended effect which is also great as well. And to do that, you wanna pour that second one while the bottom layer is not really liquid, but not quite completely firmed up. So uh, that really just takes experimentation. It really is gonna depend on the type of wax you're using, the size of your jar, how many layers, how many colors. There's a lot of factors, so it really comes down mostly to experimenting. But in this case, I really like the look of this. Now I was using a standard ball mason jar here, which is very common for people that are really starting out, but it's also really common uh, and anyone with a rustic vibe or a farmhouse vibe, smells great. So this is kind of interesting. We know this is a soy wax, but it kind of looks like a paraffin or a paraffin blend wax because it has a sheen to it, a shine to it. Uh, so I would have not guessed this was a soy wax other than the fact that there is a tiny bit of frosting, a very small amount but I would not have thought that this was soy wax. So I'm not sure what particular brand of soy wax this is, uh, but 
that a little bit shocking to me, to be honest. Smells great. It actually smells 100% like cinnamon sticks or red cinnamon candies. It smells really good. Uh, it's probably the Red Hot or the Red Cinnamon. I forgot what it's called from Candle Science he mentioned. Um, so I'm familiar with that fragrance. So if you take a look here, I don't know how well the candle shows it. Uh, it looks like we got an actually tiny chunk of cinnamon candy maybe or an embed. Uh, actually two of them. That's a really neat little touch. I don't know if it's real or if it's an embed at this point, but it is a nice little touch. You can definitely tell this is an eco wick. If you've never used eco wicks, they're, they're, uh, they definitely are thick, thicker, and they've got paper threads woven through them, and they're further apart than the paper threads that you would see in an HTP or a CD wick or a CDN wick. So you can usually recognize a, an eco wick apart from those wicks, whereas these others, uh, can be really close and hard to tell the difference. So eco wicks are usually lighter in color, and then the, the paper threads that are woven through are further apart. Uh, again, he mentioned this is an eco 16, which is a really large eco wick, but with soy wax, you often need that extra heat and that extra size. I would think this is probably gonna be too large of a wick for this jar, but again, I don't use this wax, so I don't know. I don't know for sure, and that's why I'm excited, and that's why I like doing this for everyone, is to test these candles and see. Okay, so so far, so good. Love the fragrance. I like cinnamon a lot, so uh, I'm a little partial to it. Um, it's one of the few kind of food-based type fragrances that I actually really thoroughly enjoy. It smells really good. Let's move on to candle number two. Now, this candle is absolutely gorgeous jar. Hopefully the video is doing it justice. It's uh, gorgeous. This might be an hearts and crafts type jar. I'm not entirely sure, um, but really interesting looking candle. But once again, we have some little embeds that look like little crystals, which is probably what was in the previous one as well. And these are candle safe crystals, I imagine. I'm not sure where he got them, but there are candle safe crystals that you can use. And it does add a little extra touch to the candle. I love, the, I love the orange color. Again, this is orange pumpkin spice. Again, we know this is soy wax, but it's very smooth, very minimal frosting. Of course, it's hard to see frosting through this jar, but on the top, you don't see much as well. So I'd be really curious if this is blended with something or what type of soy wax we're working with because this doesn't quite look like most of the soy waxes on the market. Same wick, Eco 16. My only concern here is we're using the same wick on both jars, even though both jars are not the same diameter. For anyone that's brand new to candle making, your wick size is determined by your wax type and your jar size, more importantly, the diameter of that jar. And uh, generally speaking, you're not gonna use the same wick size in different size jars. Now these aren't too far different, but we're probably talking about a two and a half inch jar here and more of a three inch opening on this one. But again, this was early products for Chris. He might be seeing which one burns a little bit better, but long-term, most likely these will need different wick sizes. I would think the Eco 16 is more appropriate for this size jar. Uh, and probably a little too big for this one. But again, we will find out. I don't know until we test, but I am excited to get going on it. If I had to pick a favorite on the fragrance, I'm not a huge fan of pumpkin, but I have some pumpkin fragrances that do really well. It smells like a pumpkin pie, uh, pumpkin spice. It's really good, it's really close. I do like the cinnamon stick a lot, but this one's probably slightly more interesting. So, Overall, I like this candle better. Let's put it that way. Overall, I like this one better because I like the jar better. Um, and I really love the color and it's a really good fragrance, especially with that lid on, it's a gorgeous jar. So taking one more quick look at these, once you look at the sides, um, in a few spots, you can see a bit of that frosting. So pretty, very, very common with soy wax, but this still has a lot less than normal. So I'm not sure, uh, I'd be really curious which wax he is using. While I'm testing these, I will be recording while I'm actually looking at them and talking about it and kind of what I'm thinking and what I'm looking at, what I'm seeing. And then we'll wrap the video up with kind of a summary. And we'll talk about my overall thoughts and feedback, but you're doing a really good job so far, especially for some of your first candles, but they look great, they smell great. And now we're gonna see how they perform and how they burn. But overall, very good job so far. Appreciate you sending them in. Everyone stick around for another few minutes here and we will see how these things burn. All right, we are about an hour and a half in to this uh, cinnamon candle and first of all it smells really good but uh, it's also burning pretty good as well uh, it's about an hour and a half and we do have almost a complete melt pool which is about two and a half, two to two and a half inches across the flame does look a little bit tall but in jars like this especially that first burn where the neck kind of narrows like this towards the top it's kind of common to have this on the first couple burns and then it will kind of taper off and even out later. With this being a soy candle, it really does need this extra heat just to 
kind of generate this melt pool. So I really think this is pretty good. I think in the in the first part of this video, I was talking about how this wick looked to be a little large for this jar, and the other one was a little small. Well, looking at this jar, I now think this is closer to the appropriate size, and the other one I'm now afraid is going to be too small. So all in all, this one's looking pretty good so far. We've got uh, a little bit of an off-center burn, but that's pretty normal. The wick wasn't dead center. It is a curling wick, so one side will generally get a melt pool a little bit more than the other. But overall, this one's looking really good so far, and it smells great as well. This is in a pretty large room, and we get pretty good hot throw. So good job so far. All right, guys, this one's been burning about three hours now. I would say this could probably benefit from one wick size down. It's a pretty deep melt pool for the very first burn. Uh, wick's getting pretty large. The uh, flame's getting pretty tall. Um, now, again, this is after about a three to three and a half hour burn, so... It is going to get a little more carried away once you burn it longer, obviously, but I think this one would have been just fine a wick size down. So that'd be my suggestion on this one so far, but we will keep testing and see how it goes. Okay, now this is the first burn on the pumpkin spice and we're about uh, an hour to an hour and a half in on this one as well. And as I mentioned, looking at the red hot or the cinnamon candy uh, candle, I suspected this one was gonna end up being too small and unfortunately it looks like that's gonna be the case. Um, it's having a hard time already keeping up. It's not really getting quite the wide enough melt pool. The flame's starting to taper off quite a bit already in that first hour. So I am afraid that this one is gonna be a little too small, but we will continue to let it go and see how well it ends up burning overall. It's a pretty wide jar and for soy wax, it needs that extra heat. This would be a tough one with a single wick, but we will see how it goes and check back on it here a little bit later. Also, the hot throw on this one is, is fairly weak at the moment, but that's mostly due to the wick being too small. So I'm not really concerned about the oil or the wax combination. I think we can get good hot throw with this candle. I think wicking is gonna be uh, the key to this recipe. Now this one's done a pretty good job of catching up pretty well. Uh, it actually caught up better than I thought it would, um, especially being a soy wax that can be a little tougher to burn. But after about three, four, after about four hours now on this one, it's still, it's still struggling a little bit. Um, I don't know that it's gonna catch up. I'm a little worried this one will tunnel, but I will say it's catching up much better than I thought. The flame looks great, the wick looks great. So, I mean, it's a great looking candle. It smells pretty good as well, but we just need to see what happens after a few more burns and then we will know. All right, so I tested both of these candles sent in by Chris and the results were pretty interesting. Now I'm not gonna show too much footage because honestly, each burn was just kind of the same thing over and over. It really never changed, which is great. Uh, the consistency was great. It burned, after that first burn, it was pretty much rinse and repeat. Um, and so rather than show that same footage over and over and over, I really wanna talk about my feedback uh, and kind of what I saw with these candles. First and foremost, let me remind everyone that I'm not sure exactly what type of wax this is. I know it's a soy wax, but I don't know the specific details. And I mentioned that again because the results were pretty interesting to me. Um, it did not act like a normal soy candle to me, or at least it didn't look like one at first. Now, after the candle was burned a few times, the top did start to get that kind of bumpy, cratered soy look. And so you definitely know you're working with a soy candle, but it did just feel a little bit more smooth and shiny than regular soy. Either way, I digress, uh, and I don't really want to talk about the type of wax so much. I want to talk about the wicking and how these things burned. So I believe in the first part of the video, I had concern that we were using the same wick in both jars. One jar was significantly larger than the others as far as the diameter, and we're we were using a, a, an Eco 16 wick in both of them. And then after the first burn, I had really interesting results. The cinnamon stick candle did burn a little bit hot. I think the wick was a little bit too large for that one. Um, however, that one ended up performing like pretty good and it had really, really good hot throw. It smelled great. The pumpkin spice one really struggled on the first burn. It did not want to get a full melt pool. It looked like it was going to start tunneling pretty bad. It had no hot throw pretty much at all on that first burn. I really thought there's no way this candle is going to be able to recover. Uh, and I thought the wick was just either the wrong wick type or the wrong wick size, maybe even needed two wicks. But then things got interesting. 
believe it or not, so soy wax has a really bad tendency to once it starts tunneling, it really has a hard time catching up. And that is because it, it, you hear it called a memory burn, but it's, it's, it's really just, it takes so much heat to burn soy wax sometimes that if you don't get it right early on, it, it has a hard time recovering. For some reason, the second burn, that pumpkin spice candle actually caught up pretty well. Not all the way, but really close. I was shocked. And the second burn had incredible hot throw and a really good looking melt pool. I cannot explain it. I'm not entirely sure why. The wick size obviously didn't change. The only thing I can think of is at the top of candles, it usually is a little bit harder to get the candle burning uh, on the first couple burns because no heat is getting trapped in the jar, right? All the heat is kind of escaping off the top, off the surface. Uh, once you burn a candle down a little bit further, obviously some heat gets retained and trapped in the jar and that helps kind of melt things. But I was shocked how quickly it recovered. Now, with all that being said, I would make a couple changes to the wicks. The first is on cinnamon sticks, I would probably wick down one size. It burned pretty good. It smelled great, but it had a pretty deep melt pool really quickly. Eco wicks will generally get pretty tall flames. And we're going to talk about eco wicks here in a minute as well. But um, I think you would benefit from wicking down just one size. So maybe go to an eco 14, uh, see if you get good results with that. If it's still a little large, you may even get away with a 12. I'm not sure you'll have to test, but I would definitely try an Eco 14. Now on the pumpkin spice, even though it did a pretty good job of catching up, I would still wick up one size. I think one size, maybe two, so sort of the opposite of the cinnamon sticks, and I'd be really curious on your results. I do think they need to be different size wicks though. The, the jars are just a little bit too different, so I'd be pretty shocked if one, one wick size really did a good job on both candles. So that'd be my overall advice on the wicking. I think you can stick with your eco wicks and just adjust the sizing on each just a little bit and you'll be in really good shape. Now I wanna talk about eco wicks real briefly because they can frustrate people and they're a little confusing. They're like, they're odd wicks. And the reason I say they're odd is eco wicks tend have a tendency to get tall, big flames. The flame is taller on an eco wick than it is on many other wicks. And so it looks over wicked it seems like it's gonna to burn too hot. Sometimes they'll get kind of smoky and sooty because the flame is very tall. Even if you trim it correctly, it can be a tall flame. However, just because it's a tall flame, it sometimes can struggle to get a wide melt pool. So it, it's a very confusing wick to use for that reason. Sometimes the flame is large, yet you still have a hard time getting a full melt pool. That is why eco wicks are mostly suggested to use for low melt point waxes because it has an easier time kind of spreading out that melt pool. The reason I mention that is if you ever find yourself using eco wicks and even though you keep going up in size and the flame's getting too big and you're still not getting the results you want with the melt pool, you may want to just consider trying a different wick at that point. Now I'm not trying to say eco wicks don't work and there are a lot of good times to use eco wicks and they work just fine. But if you are having issues like that, it's worth considering just a different wick type entirely. Overall, Chris, you've done a really good job, especially for someone who's really just started making candles. Obviously, I know as you continue to grow and, and develop things, you're gonna work on packaging and you're gonna work on your label a little bit. Normal things that we all continue to tweak and improve as we go. But for starting off, your candles are doing a really good job. They look great and they smelled great and uh, you chose really good scents as well. I, I happen to like both of these fragrances quite a bit. So hats off to you on a job well done so far. Hope you enjoyed this feedback hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you all for tuning in and watching. If you're interested in checking out any of the other reviews or any of the content here on this channel and you're not already a subscriber, I would encourage you to hit subscribe, turn on that little bell so you're notified whenever I post new videos. Otherwise, YouTube might not tell you and you might end up missing them. So anyways, thank you all for being here. If you wouldn't mind giving this video a thumbs up and I will see you all next time. Thanks.